Mercenary Metal Radio today. Uh, so, Christians Against Drugs. Today is a joyous day. Here I am unveiling a brand new series of Christians Against Drug billboards, which are now appealing, appearing in major cities around the globe. Keep an eye out for these PSA posters in your area. The particular billboard has just been erected in the beautiful historical city of Coventry. Within 25 minutes of its erection, I have received messages from nearly 17 million local residents informing me that our billboard PSA has saved them from their addictions to drugs. One man told me he has been snorting aspirin blunts and crystal mirth for over 30 years, but has instantly been cured by seeing the light of Jesus. Fab. I expect all a drug abuse will soon be a thing of the past, thanks to me. I would like to thank God for providing me with this platform to help the needy. I would also like to thank our loyal disciples for supporting our work here at Christians Against Drugs. But most of all, I would like to thank myself as I truly am the greatest philanthropist who has ever lived. God bless me, St. Margaret. And by Katie and Scott on the Facebooks, God bless you, Margaret. My six-year-old son, Adam, was addicted to crystal mirth after I stupidly consented to vaccinations. Thank you, though. Not ten minutes ago, he was saved just by looking at your billboard on a post. In the first picture, you can see he is high as a kite, wearing nothing but a top hat and brandishing a makeshift whip. He insisted we call him the Emperor of Cheese. Then I made him put on his clothes and sit down and look at the billboard. And you can see in the next four pictures the change in him. He let the Lord and your post heal him. At first, he was resistant. Then, the shock on his face when he realized how close he had came to burning in hell. Then, the joy at being saved. And finally, a normal happy child who isn't a junkie. I, I thank the team of Christians Against Drugs enough for giving my son a second chance. Hashtag, Hail Margaret. Hashtag, praise Jeebus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then the response to that is Christians Against Drugs. Glory to God in the highest, Katie. This truly is proof that God exists. The power of love can heal your son. Even though a computer screen, I doubt those vaccine, vaccine pending doctors have that kind of skill. I'm simply thrilled that Adam has accepted Christ and kicked the drug habit. I shall send him a Christians Against Drug key ring and a award certificate for his achievements. Now you won't have to worry about a birthday present for him this year too, Margaret. I hope you guys are having a very awesome week so far. Um, the band that I played is called Guidelines. They're from San Diego, California. I'm pretty impressed. They have a pretty sweet sound. Um, it's just a little bit different than a lot of the stuff that I've heard lately. Um, their album was recorded at the American Sound Studios by Brandon Jensen, mixed and mastered by Jake Wilson. Um, I don't know if it has the band guy's names. Oh, sweet. They put a hyperlink in there. I just clicked on it. Okay, so this is marketing like one-on-one. If you're a band and you want to get people into your shit, right, go on your um, on your band camp and then put a, a hyperlink for like your band name, right, and then link it to your Facebook so that if people want to follow you on Facebook, then they can just use the hyperlink. It's pretty simple. And if you have the person who knows how to do that, do it. So the band members are Isaac Juarez, Cano Esposa, Espinosa. With a Z, not with an S. Bryce Middleton and Cyrus Faramazzi. Oh, wow, that's a really badass Italian name. Faramazzi. It's, it's about to cook up some shit with that name. I'm liking that. These guys are pretty sweet. Um, they're going to be on tour in California for right now, but I don't think they have tour dates posted right now on the Facebook page. But check them out. It's facebook.com slash guidelines the band. And you guys can listen to the music that they have there. I think they have two albums up on their band camp. So the full length that they have is um, Guidelines Real, which you guys can check out. Um, I think the actual title of the album is Worth the Wait. 
Okay, so they put out a single. So they have a, a full-length uh, EP. Um, I'm going to call it an EP because it's only eight songs, um, which is a full-length, which is called Worth the Wait, at least the title of the, the link. And then they put out a single called Real. It's pretty badass. I really like the sound. It kind of reminds me of the old Braid kind of stuff and a little bit of the Kid Crash kind of sound um, with kind of that the Get Up Kids kind of musings as well. It's pretty freaking tight. I'm a fan. So on Reason.com, on their Hit and Run um, blog, you can check out an article called Sandra Bland's Arrest and the Expectation of Meek Subservience. Some of the reaction of my post about Sandra Bland's arrest leads me to believe that I was not sufficiently explicit in criticizing Texas Trooper Brian Asenia's actions. It seems to me that he had no legitimate reason to order Bland out of the car after stopping her for a minor traffic violation, changing lanes without signaling, let alone the arrest for failing to obey an unjustified command. Judging from the dashcam video of the traffic stop, his actions were motivated by anger at Bland's insufficiently submissive attitude. In particular, her insistence that she had the right to smoke a cigarette in her own car, even if he preferred that she put it out. The escalation that ensued, which was driven, as I said, by Ancenia's need to assert authority for his own sake, was completely unnecessary and unprofessional. But that does not necessarily mean it was legal. The Supreme Court has said police do not need any special reason to order drivers out of their cars during routine traffic stops. The rationale for that rule, which reflects the court's overly salacious attitude toward police, is officer safety. But it does not require a case-specific inquiry as to whether a particular officer during the particular stop actually faced a potential threat that justified his order. So even if Insignia had no reasonable safety concerns regarding Bland, it looks like an order like this was constitutional, according to the Supreme Court's interpretation of the Fourth Amendment. As to whether a Texas cop can legally order any driver he stops out of his car, then arrest him for failing to obey a lawful command, I'm not sure. In 2007, there's a discussion thread, members of the Texas district and County Attorneys Association disagreed on the right to that question, but the provision requiring obedience to lawful police orders is part of the transportation code, and in Texas you can be arrested for even minor traffic offenses, with the notable exception of speeding. A practice in Supreme Court has been approved. It w if it's legal to arrest someone for failing to buckle her seatbelt, why wouldn't it be legal to arrest somebody for failing to comply with a cop's stupid but apparently lawful order? Notably, the Texas Department of Public Safety said and senior violated the department's procedures regarding traffic stops and the department's courtesy policy, <laughs> but so far has not said he has violated the law. You guys can read the rest of that article. I haven't actually watched the whole thing. The The video on YouTube is like an hour and something minutes of the, the whole thing. And I guess, you know, she got shot and um, possibly died. I don't really know the whole whole part of the story. But the whole problem is is uh, traffic being something that needs to be enforced through legislation, through armed cops driving around aimlessly to collect money for the state. So if you don't know anything about police work... Essentially, the, the job now is just to legitimize the state's ability to make money. And so if you're a cop in any place in the country, you have a quota of a certain amount of tickets that you have to get per day. This is real. This exists. This happens in every place in the United States. You have to get at least 12, between 10 and 20 tickets per day, no matter what. No matter what's going on, you have to get 10 tickets. And then this also equates into, there's another reasoning for that too, because the police department gets to charge a certain amount of money to the state or to the locality of the court time. And court time for a cop right now is about time and a half or more sometimes, depending on where they live. And they actually schedule their own court appearances. So you know, they get these 12 people that they have to arrest. So that's 12 court appearances. So they can't possibly do that all in one month. So they schedule it maybe for the next month. And even if the guy's not working that day, he still goes into court. He still wears his uniform or doesn't even wear a uniform at all. Just goes in and charges a certain amount of money. So that means that he has an incentive to be there at court 
to get paid time and a half. Why wouldn't he? Because obviously he's there making money. Um, so now the opposite way of doing things like this to assist in road hazards, if you've ever been on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, um, which goes about, I think, 300 and something miles or longer of um, Pennsylvania Turnpike, State Farm Insurance and the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission have a roadside assistance um, trucks, basically, that go up and down the road, and anybody who needs help, they'll help them. I'm not sure if there's a charge for it or not, but these are vehicles that are out there so that you can get help with your vehicle. And it's not a guy with a gun, or maybe he has guns, doesn't really matter, it just means that he's not a guy who's going to be willing to take you to jail and, you know, punch you in the face and, oh, well, you didn't have a seatbelt on or whatever, and, oh, well, now that I've stopped you and tried to help you on the side of the road, do you have anything suspicious in your car that I need to look for? There's no basis to that. There's no basis for anybody searching anybody's car for any reason, unless somebody committed a crime, There's and you know for a fact that they committed a crime. There's no reason for you to be searching anyone's car. There's no possible way that that is a, is a moral thing to do. I mean, unless we live in a dictatorship. I mean, hey, if you want to live in a dictatorship, totally cool. And as the saying goes, you don't live in America, move to Somalia. Well, America's there too, so <laughs> have that one at you. Military Times Roulette. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Neller, the Robert B. Neller, the Lieutenant General Commander of the U.S. Marine Corps, arming Marine recruiters could harm the mission. <laughs> the nominee for the next com Commandant of the Marine Corps won't rule out arming recruiters in the wake of the deadly attacks in Tennessee, but said such a step would be an extreme measure to keep them safe. Lieutenant General Robert Neller told the Senate panel Thursday morning that a plan to improve security after the tragedy in Chattanooga could include arming individuals, but added that Defense Department officials needed to weigh in the consequences that step might entail. Neller head of the Marine Corps Forces Command in Norfolk, Virginia, appeared before the Senate Armed Services Committee for his confirmation hearing to the above commandant. Is that like a decent quote? They need to rec recruit. They need to stay connected to the American people. So whatever we do, we need to ensure that we can continue to go to schools to recruit, he said. Since the shooting, multiple lawmakers have advocated arming troops who work at recruiting stations and allowing all service members on military installations to carry firearms. Uh, Representative Duncan Hunter, a Republican, and Representative Scott Des Harless, Republican from Tennessee, introduced separate bills this week that would provide for both of those measures, respectively. Now, the interesting thing is for the reserves. I mean, they, the... They serve on the behest of, um, or the state guard um, serves on the behest of the, the governor itself. So the governor has a, has a broad uh, amount of um, power, and a lot of those troops work directly for the governor and themselves. They don't actually work for the, the, the army. They do in a, in a back way. I'm not really sure how that whole system works, but especially if you're a guardsman, a governor could just say, hey, everybody has to carry guns. So problem solved. Problem staying solved. And that's the only way to solve this issue, because the issue isn't um, just allowing recruiters, it's allowing the entire military to be allowed to defend themselves, along with contractors and DOD civilians and, and anybody else. The, the concept and idea that um, the United States government is allowed to tell you that you, cannot, you can and cannot carry a gun is complete bullshit. I mean, if, they're, if their job is supposedly defense and protecting all people in the country, well, how do you protect yourself with a gun? I mean, it's it's the only, I mean, if you're a 90-pound woman, how are you going to fight a 500-pound dude? I mean, that's it's just bullshit. And the 90-pound woman with a, a Taurus judge <laughs> who shoots a guy with a, you know, a, 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 is that a 403 round or 402, whatever the shotgun, a 410 shotgun shell. You know, if you shoot a 500-pound dude with a 410 shotgun shell, I'm pretty sure he's going to go down with one or two shots. The 90-pound woman can't exactly take a, you know, punch from a big guy like that. 
She could, but she's not going to last too long. After five hits, you're done. <laughs> Charitable soldier installs doors in Afghan homes, kicks them down. <laughs> Kandahar, Afghanistan, in a new grassroots effort to cultivate positive U.S.-Afghan relations in the region, Army Sergeant Ted Bukowski has started reaching out to the local community by offering free construction of front doors so that they can later have them kicked down in a no, no-knock night raids. Not everything about war on terrorism is about violence. It's also about building communities and bridging communication gaps between two vastly different cultures, Bukowski said, as he removed the heel of his boot from one of the new doors and zip-tied a family member of seven. I used to go on these raids all the time, and we just walked around through burlap flaps, or some really bad cases. Nothing at all. We just waltz in, and if we didn't have any flashbangs, it was almost impossible to scare anyone. According to Scorses, Wachowski began the self-funded effort a few months ago, and has already seen incredible changes in relations with the local populace. Materials can be scarce in more remote regions of the Kandahar province, but that hasn't stopped the soldier from doing his self-proclaimed duty of improving the livelihoods of the local population. In some cases, Wokowski recovers the doors that have already been kicked down and refinishes them so they can be suitably kicked down again in another home. <laughs> home Depot's shipping is pretty astronomical in this part of the world, he said. That's how they get you. I gotta make use of what I have around me. Plus, recycling is good for the environment. <laughs> You guys can check that out at Charitable Soldier Installs Doors Afghan Home Kicks. <laughs> the Duffelblog.com. <laughs> so good. It, 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 you know, it, it really does show the futility of the, the Afghan war. It's just like, you know, why are we there still? I mean, really, what is the point? You know, if we're just going to stay there to kick down more doors, you know, <laughs> and then rebuild them to kick them down again, you know, it's just too funny. If your band would like to be featured on the next Mercenary Metal Radio episode, please send your MP3 of your band and description and or, you know, link to your website to wotactical at gmail.com. That's whiskey oscar tactical, T-A-C-T-I-C-A-L at gmail.com. And I will play your fucking music, especially if you're not signed. Please if you're signed, just don't really send it to me because I'm going to get flagged and I'll just have to take it down anyways. So if you don't, you're not signed, you're an independent band, or you're, you have a small label, please send me your music. I'd love to play it, whether it's metal, math rock, your you know, six-year-old kid who just has cool songs. Hey, send it to me. And send your furries, too. If you got like a sweet, you know, like super hoo German shepherd with a flag on him and he's kicking ass, taking names, kicking down Afghan doors... Hey, some of your picks be pretty badass. Um, to all my buddies who are deployed, I've been enjoying some, I think it's Washburn um, single malt whiskey. So here's some single malt whiskey for all you motherfuckers who are deployed who can't have any or are enjoying shitty Afghan liquor. That's just so bad. It's horrible. It's like bathtub gin. Ugh, it's disgusting. I had it once. I'll never have it again. It's, just, it's that bad. It's pretty disgusting you guys have an awesome fucking week and please enjoy the rest of your weekend with family and friends and get shwasted as much as possible because when you're not deployed it's an awesome time you were so beautiful